Sorry, I haven't had much sleep since E3 last week. Ugh, we had a lot of reviewing this week. Last of Us. Miramasa? Why am I reviewing Miramasa the Demon Blade? I mean, <laughs> nothing against the game, it's one of my personal favorite third party Wii titles. But, why now? Okay, so uh, a remake's coming to the Vita, that's um, nifty. <laughs> just, just roll the info. Ugh. Muramasa the Demon Blade was developed by Vanillaware and published by Ignition Entertainment in America. It was originally available on the Wii and released in North America on the 8th of September 2009. Muramasa is the spiritual sequel to Vanillaware's 2007 PS2 hit, Orange Sphere. Just looking at the opening screens of the game, you know that Muramasa is a Japanese game through and through. The text, the music, and even the voice work. Outside of the actual subtitles, everything is just like in the Japanese version. And you know what? That's fine. Seeing these characters talk in their native tongue with subtitles just feels more natural than listening to the attempt at dubbing by a small company. Muramasa actually has two stories in one, focusing on a guy named Kitsuki and another one on a girl named Momohi, or as I like to call them, Emo Guy and Skirt Upwards. The gameplay is simple enough, you run across the brilliantly designed 2D planes until you come across some enemies, pull out your sword and uh, Here's where the real magic begins. The combat in this game just feels incredible. Unleashing numerous combos and bringing down your enemies to their green, flamey soul. Souls which are used to forge new, more powerful blades, allowing you to do even more devastating special attacks. And when you're not doing that, you can always just dine at a sushi shop or go to a hot spring filled with monkeys. Not kidding. The overall design of Master was definitely one of the more unique titles of the Wii's library. In fact, the entire 7th generation. Utilizing tried and true 2D development, we got a vibrant, dynamic game that never saw a dip in quality or in frame rates. And that's really all I can say. It may not seem like a lot, but that's the beauty of it. Muramasa has shown us that even something simple can be an amazing experience. And word of advice, if you are going to play it, then I strongly recommend the Classic or GameCube controller. And if that hasn't sold you, here is what happens when you pull a fully restored sword from a sheath. Nice, huh? However, there are some flaws. The major one being having to track back to the start of the level after finishing the boss. Sadly, there is no quick transport button, and these tracks usually come with no enemy occurrences. So you're left wandering back with nothing happening. Definitely don't do these parts if you're sleepy. <laughs> ah, ah, I'm awake. I'm awake. Huh? Huh? Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Finding a copy of Muramasa isn't hard, as it goes for about 12 bucks on Amazon, but when it comes to the re-release, Muramasa Rebirth on Vita, it will not only contain everything that was on the original, but also four additional campaigns. And you don't have long to wait, 
as it will be arriving in North America on June 25th. Well, folks, I'm Enigma, and I'm going to go back to sleep.